October already. I did not do a September update video, but I decided let's just go ahead and do an October one. Normally we wouldn't even be here in October, at least not at this late in the month, but this is the uh, longest that we have stayed here at any one consistent consecutive period of time. So there is not really much going on in the garden. Most of the beds are done and there's a few things still hanging on, but why don't we just walk through and I'll tell you where things were and what's happening to them now. We originally put potatoes in this bed and didn't really expect a terrific harvest. And in fact, for a small space, we actually got a lot of potatoes this year. So worked out better than anticipated. So now, however, because we do a rotation of the garden, same thing doesn't go in the same spot two years in a row. There's um, garlic planted in there right now. So 200 cloves of garlic that came out from uh, earlier in the summer, got planted back in. So it's been covered up, it's been watered down and it's just ready to rest for the winter and start in the spring. We still have kale growing. Again, that's kind of a first for us. And we have some broccoli, but really the broccoli is not actually forming proper heads. So that'll probably get fed to the chickens. So but the kale has been exciting. Up here is the raspberries and they are done. And all of the old growth and the old stems got pruned off. A lot of the new growth needs to be pruned back more, but sometimes I hold off and do that in the later, um, kind of early spring or late winter. So that's, uh, that's the raspberry bed. This is where the garlic was growing. And I think this year we're going to try probably in the spring to dig some hugo cultures into there. We did that in an upper bed. I um, showed that in a previous video earlier in the summer and um, I think these beds are going to get hugled so they'll be dug out big uh, pieces of kind of wet rotting birch will get sunk down in the ground and then some straw and soil and mulch and manure gets thrown on top and um, they'll be ready to go. I think the plan for this bed next year is squashes. So again they were further up and we're kind of going in a clockwise rotation so down in here we tried growing beans and radishes and what really we did get a few beans off of it kidney beans um, uh, just regular green beans the radishes bolted so we just let them go to seed so we're in a good position for planting radishes next year we got tons of seed so that is the garlic bed up here we had some Walla Walla onions and um, some leeks. So the onions came out, the leeks are in. I think there's a little bit of parsley in the corner there. So these are the beds that we hugocultured this year and they did fairly well. We put squash plants in, so we had zucchinis, butternuts, and pumpkins. I would say overall it wasn't a stellar year for them. But when we pulled the plants out, you could definitely tell like the roots had done really well. They had spread, they'd gone deep. So next year, this is where tomatoes will grow. And everything right now has just had a bit of a cover crop, a vetch, rye, a field pea sort of mix has gone on and then a little bit of straw and it all got um, watered in. So it's ready to, uh, just rest for the winter and get some tomatoes and peppers next year. This bed down here had some tomatoes in it. We sort of spread most of the tomatoes in one spot, but we had them also in a couple others. So I'm not sure what the plan for this coming year, next year, 2021 was gonna be, but there's in the front of this area, there is some oregano and some thyme. Coreopsis, so those will stay 
And then under the tripods are two um, hops plants, two on this side and then two over on the other side. So I think we're going to redo the tripod setup and try and create something different for them to climb on and maybe experiment a bit with pruning them halfway through the year and just see what happens. But anyway, this area still needs to be cleaned up. There's just, you know, get rid of the geraniums and the nasturtiums, but not quite ready to do that yet. Anyway, they'll get some cover crop put on them and then they'll be ready to to go to bed for the winter. And this up here I filmed many times <laughs> this year it seems is the tomatoes and the peppers. And yeah, middle of October and the tomatoes are still going. They are so slow to ripen, but they just seem so dang happy. The plants are actually even trying to put out new shoots and I'm having to prune. So that's crazy, but we tried something different this year as well with creating a hoop house. So one of the things about moving and always doing a rotation is that it's hard to set up permanent structures for beds. Because um, whatever you build in this spot, you know, is going to need to get moved over there next year. So what we ended up going with this year is about four foot sections of galvanized rebar. Um, about every three feet and then PVC tubes that just slide over the top and create an arch. And I tell you, you've been able to raise them and lower them. Um, they're easy to walk inside of and they're actually really easy then to take, take back out again. So we're definitely gonna do that again. The peppers, we did shorter pieces, I think three foot pieces sunk, you know, eight inches or so in the ground. So you still got two and a bit sticking up. And um, I think with the tomatoes next year, we're probably going to put this system together much earlier in the year. So all along the back is a black plastic. Plastic's not my favorite thing, but in this case, it's been reused for several years. And the sun comes in on the front, kind of comes from uh, left to right, or right to left in this image. And so it bounces off the black, it absorbs the heat, and has just created a nice warm environment, which is why I think we've been able to keep these tomatoes going right now into the middle of October. So that's definitely a setup we'll do again, and I would highly recommend. So probably next year when we put the system together, I will just do a separate video on how to create a, a really nicely portable hoop house. So... Uh, clear plastic on the top. We pull it down at night, and it snugs it all in, and then during the day when we get a nice sunny day like this, we uh, pull them up and let the sunlight get in. So anyway, peppers doing really well. Uh, we went and picked a whole bunch of the ripe ones and there's still a whole bunch hanging in. These ones are called uh, Ristra, I believe. And they're supposed to be like a jalapeno, but they're massive. I don't know if you can see next to my hand here, like how big that sucker is. So we're going to try doing some stuffed jalapeno type of recipes with them. And um, the black Hungarians are still going strong. I think there's a ristra in here that's even bigger than the others. This guy here, like... I'm going to have to weigh him when we take him off because he is just huge. So. Lots of, these are just bell peppers. We did have a whole bunch ripen earlier in the year and then these ones just haven't ripened yet. But anyway, tomatoes. There's hordes of them that are showing color and even more that aren't. So. We will pull everything off. We just keep kind of going day by day. We can look at the weather forecast and say, well, tomorrow they're going to have to come off. But as long as it doesn't go down to freezing and we're able to keep them covered, they just seem to keep growing. So I don't know. We've got about two more weeks before we head back to the city. So we'll see how long we can hold off before we have to take 
all the green ones out. We need time to pull all of the hoop structure out and we need time to, to clean up and put some cover crop on the bed. But for the most part, we're going to try and hang in as long as we can. More peppers, geraniums. I bring the geraniums from home every year and we use them as just a pollinator encourager and um, take them back again. So lots of nasturtiums. We gathered a bunch of those seeds, but at this point we're just hoping that they're going to self-seed a little bit. That would be fun. The uh, cucumbers were in here. So next year these beds are going to be potatoes and onions and I don't know what else. That's a big area for potatoes and onions for us anyway. So But yeah, the cucumbers did really well, and I was fairly pleased. Lots and lots of dill this year, so we've saved some seed from the dill, and I've dried a whole bunch. But um, hopefully it'll self-seed as well, and we won't have to plant a ton of dill next year. So These guys over here are called Jerusalem artichokes. They're also known as sunchokes, and it's a tuber. Goes under the ground, it's kind of like a potato, but really tastes a little bit more like a turnipy sort of thing. It's hard to describe. They're they're yummy, um, and normally they get really tall, but we transplanted them this year, so not as tall. However, this guy who's keeled over, that they do say is one of the signs that they're ready to be harvested, is that they start to tip over. They're in the sunflower family. So we have another bed of them further down there. And then out in the orchard, we planted a bunch as well. So they're a perennial. They can be a bit invasive, so you need to be careful where you plant them if you decide to. But they're fun, no matter how many little bits of sunchoke you pull out. You will not get it all, and it will come back the following year, so you gotta love a perennial. So that's that's the garden at this stage of the game. It's not really pretty right now, but you know, it's given its all, and it's been a good year, despite the craziness of this year. So we can't complain. We've got a bit of work ahead of us. But we've enjoyed our time at Leftfield Farm. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe go ahead and subscribe so you'll get no notice when a new video is posted. And I look forward to sharing the garden for 2021 with you. Take care.